how'd you guys meet? I'm going to let you take this. You sure? Yeah. You're the one that messaged me first. I post a picture of Joey and I on our Instagram, on Instagram. And like the comments are like, we don't care what you do in the bedroom. I'm like, I'm literally holding his hand at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> As men, straight or gay, you're, you're more upfront sexually. Yep. Now in the gay community for men, it seems that like it is sexualized, but it's just like dudes that are like horny, horny, horny. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's like, yeah, we're dudes. We're still fucking dudes. <laughs> yeah. So is it like literally fucking dudes <laughs> <laughs> growing up? I never thought I was possible. You'd never seen a gay strength athlete automatically as a gay kid growing up. You're like, well, I guess I just can't do that. Like my dad put me in hockey, put me in soccer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do figure skating. And he's like, <laughs> well, you're going to do hockey first. Cause all, I had like all female cousins around the same age. And I'm like, I want to do what they're doing. Like I want the white skates. I don't want the black one. <laughs> it's like, you're going to get the black ones. <laughs> and they said, Hey, so we want you to be at worlds this year. I was like, that's sick. And they're like, but it's in Botswana. And they're like, well, it's in Africa. And um, so homosexuality is illegal there. I was like, okay. And they were like, so we understand if you don't want to come, uh, we'll save your invite for next year. Uh, but we do advise you don't bring your partner. You said something interesting earlier when you said you've been gay longer than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know, for, for, a, for a straight guy, like throws you off a bit. So like, wait a second. You, so, on the other hand. Well, for me, like once I start talking, it's like glitters just shooting out of my mouth. So I can't really like hide that. But it's like when I go to different like groups of people, like. I said a very talented special <laughs> effect you have there. But it's like you're saying like you soften your voice. Like I try to like deepen my voice. What a lot of people don't realize is like the gym for a gay man is terrifying. And I will say like- I it'd be more like a haven. <laughs> well, <laughs> depends on the gym. Oh, <laughs> true. Um, I was picturing West Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> that vibe, yeah. <laughs> but like the mesh shirts yeah. and stuff, you know, I'm excited. It's This is my first year back at World's Strongest Man since 2019. Training went great. Um, I did everything I could that's within my control to be able to perform as well as I need to. The competition is just gonna be hard. Like, who? Everybody I've talked to, it's like looking at my group, whoever wins is going to have a perfect competition. Mm -hmm. Pat Project family, how's it going now? On this podcast, we talk a lot about getting your lab work done. That's why we've partnered with Merrick Health. They're a telehealth network, and they're owned by Derek for more plates, more dates. But the amazing thing about Merrick is that when, you, when they get your labs done, they have a client care coordinator go over those labs with you. Now, a lot of you, when you guys are looking at labs and looking at your testosterone, cholesterol, et cetera, what Merrick Health does is they don't immediately throw a needle at you, okay? They can help you figure out what type of things you need to do in terms of your nutrition, potentially what you need to do through your supplementation. And if you're someone who potentially has hormonal issues, man, whether you're advanced in age or you do have very low testosterone, Merrick will put you on a protocol that is specific to you and that helps you out with your current levels. The problem with a lot of these other telehealth networks is that when they do HRT for individuals, they give everybody the same exact thing. And that can actually damage you and not be beneficial. That's why Merrick Health's the way to go. And Andrew, how do they go about it? Yes, that's over at MerrickHealth.com. That's M-A-R-E-K health.com. And let's say you just you just want to get your testosterone checked, or maybe you want to get your testosterone, your estrogen, and a couple of other things. Uh, load all those labs into your cart, and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off all those labs. But let's say you're not sure where to start. Head over to MerrickHealth.com slash POWERPROJECT and get the Power Project panel. That's going to cover everything you need to know including a uh, consultation with a client care coordinator uh, that comes free with that and use promo code power project to save $101 off of that entire bundle. Again, MerrickHealth.com links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So, so. Whoa. Okay. Good. We're on. Yeah. Yeah. We're going. We're rolling. You have it working. Yeah, I think so. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm. So what happened with this? Uh, so right in SEMA. Yeah, dude. So, um, Chris Kadowski, who we're going to have on the podcast, like right after you guys, he came here, he has us doing all this body work stuff. And in his book, he talked about the so right. So I was like, I had to purchase this immediately. I've used it here before. Mm -hmm. But one of the things he mentions is that like tight psoases can lead to sexual dysfunction because of like the way it connects to the spine and then how if it's tight, like individuals are in here and it kind of restricts blood flow to your genitals, right? Makes sense. Yeah. So I don't so necessarily much. think I have like tight hip flexors or whatever. I don't work on my psoas much, but after I did it, First off, I felt pretty great, but everyone has morning wood. I woke up with typical morning wood, but this time yeah. it wasn't as typical. It was like, it was like, I it felt was exceptional. I felt <laughs> exceptional. It's like I felt extra pressure. <laughs> it was literally, and I was, I was like, 
and then it was like, bah! and I was, uh, I, it was like powerful. Mm. And it's, it's not typically weak, but it was <laughs> extra powerful. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure like the So Right just kind of like that's gonna be the new marketing up. ad for yeah. So Right. Now we're gonna see girl. like So Right for ED. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, and the, the hey. marketing could be like, be careful with how much you can use you, you know, use this because you don't want to grow like three four inches mm. out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't. Well, that's the thing, right? Maybe, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> maybe, it gets, cool. yeah, maybe it gets too aggressive, you know? It can, it, you know, your dick can kind of seem angry sometimes, right? It can. You're that's like, whoa, like, dude, what the Calm fuck down. happened to on. you, bro? <laughs> this is supposed to be a happy moment. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I understand we're excited, but good God. No, nah, but I'm real talk, everybody else should get so right. They're like, we're not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> you should just go on Amazon right now it. and fucking buy it. I'm but serious. we are now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for the next two hours or so, everyone just has to bear with us. This is like being in health class, <laughs> yeah. you know, like in what, eighth, ninth grade? Like we're going to say penis, we're going to say ass, we're going to say gay, we're going to say lots of words, and you guys might have a hard time with it. Maybe I heard it in fourth grade from my gym but teacher. But that's every episode from us. You understand? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. nothing different. new for this different. podcast. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> but we do have to get people prepared, right? Because, yeah. pe you know, people are sensitive nowadays, I guess. That's true. More so than others. Do you think people are more sensitive nowadays? And do you think it's a good or bad thing? What do you think? I mean, I feel like we were talking about this the other day, like what we were watching, like Will and Grace, it's like the, the shit that they say on there, you would never be able to say oh, now. Hell like, no. Like so no. many people would have an issue with it. Yeah. And like, yes and no, I feel like some things you shouldn't be able to say, but. I feel like people are just more willing to voice their opinion against it now mm -hmm. right like i feel like something they don't like they can just like pop off and just say whatever they feel like they can say whatever they want um so i don't think like people are necessarily more sensitive i think they are just more comfortable with it you know talking about the their displeasure with something mm -hmm. i agree there too will and grace i watched a few episodes that when i was a kid it was a good is show. he not jack <laughs> come on <laughs> okay i see what you're saying i see what you're saying that yeah nailed it yeah um but one thing, one thing that's that's pretty fucking interesting nowadays is like, I think there there's a sensitivity aspect, but there's also things that are legitimate. There 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 are things that are legitimate. Like there are certain there are certain words that you'd use in high school, or I'd use in high school, right? That shit was totally normal, and it wasn't nothing was ever melt in malice or, or it was just like you're fucking around or you're just talking shit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you're just certain things you shouldn't be saying, but it's it's a it's apparent that like those words cannot be used in that way it, it, it's it affects other people you know what i mean yeah so some people are angry about that but it's like that just makes sense you know find find other words good, that huh? can give you some of the <laughs> same that can give the same effect same meaning yeah exactly you know well, it's like growing up like even me it's like how many times do you say like that's gay hell I, a lot all the time a mm -hmm. lot <laughs> It's just Wait like a second, you were saying it? I was. I mean, I was a late bloomer though. I didn't come out till I was twenty-two. Mm. You know? So I always joke around and say, like, my gaydar's terrible because I didn't even know it about myself until <laughs> oh I was twenty-two. <laughs> I mean, it is bad. Yeah. It is. <laughs> you're so you're so <laughs> learning. I love how he just throws me under the yeah. bus even more. <laughs> Joey's like, that guy was flirting with you. You're like, what? He was? <laughs> <laughs> like I had no I, I had no idea. No, I'm oblivious to that shit. Yeah, when it comes to these mm -hmm. topics, you know, I think uh, sometimes people get, they just get really like, uh, they get really frustrated, I think, I think, because people don't know what they can say, what they can't say, and they feel like things are are being like stripped away from them. They, they can't still have fun with their friend and say X, Y, or Z. The way I've looked at a lot of this stuff is like, if I'm intentionally hurting somebody, I want to know about it. I do want to know about it. Yeah. I want to work on correcting myself because... I just think that I'm massively flawed. Like I got a lot of things that I could work on and I can get better at. So if I say something and it feels derogatory for somebody or for a particular group, I would hope that it was pointed out in some way. I don't know about getting canceled. But <laughs> yeah, not that far, but I, like, yeah, let I hope me know. it was like pointed out because I'm not ever trying to do anything out of like malice or trying to really legitimately hurt anybody. I think mm -hmm. a lot of that comes from you know, when you talk about like people are afraid to like ask questions or talk about things, like especially to two gay men, it is all behind the intention of what you're asking, right? Like, cause there's some people that like will ask questions and it's just coming off blatantly inappropriate and offensive to both me and Joey, mm -hmm. right? But if somebody's like, 
hey, I like, I've always kind of wondered this, like, and they ask a question regarding homosexuality or the LGBTQ plus community. And if you can tell that they have a genuine curiosity and they're finding out to better their knowledge about the subject, then like, I'm totally fine answering any question you have. Right. But like, if you're coming across as a dick, <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you to go F off. Yeah. Yeah, like how much steroids do you take to lift all those big weights? When someone comes at you yeah, to ask you a exactly. lifting question, they're like, that it's happened like, to me at a high school I was just talking at. <laughs> <laughs> Not even kidding. Yeah, wow. It's part of the q and A. I I was like, that is a ballsy yeah. move, sir. Like uh, a, great, a great way to start off the yeah. q and <laughs> Like, all right, we're going to take no more questions after that. <laughs> well, and Joey's like filming the thing and he's like behind the camera. You can hear him be like, what? <laughs> like, Did he just say that? <laughs> That's where everyone's minds fixated on right now is is yeah. on like performance enhancing drugs because you see so many people talking about it more openly. Yeah, and then yeah. so the young kids are like, well, it seems like a cool way to make money in the fitness game. If I get really strong or if I get in really good shape, then maybe that's an avenue I can go down. It's a good and a bad thing, right? Because I think obviously when PEDs became really popular, they were being abused in a way that was negatively affecting people. Um, but I feel like with people being more open about their experiences with it and and how it is affecting them and, and whatever they want to get out of it, I feel like having those those conversations does it just gives more information to people about it, right? The benefits and the negatives of of PEDs. So like I think it's like it's a double edged sword that people are talking about it more and those and now kids have, you know, access to that information. How'd you guys meet? I'm going to let you take this. You sure? Yeah. You're the one that messaged me first. Okay. Oh, <laughs> dating app? <laughs> oh, the most go. classy dating yeah. app there is Tinder. for gay men. Oh, uh, Grindr. Yeah. Bingo. <laughs> you take that. Yeah. I know my apps. <laughs> so so we met in 2014 on Grindr. Um, I actually wasn't even out yet. I was still in the closet. So I was that shirtless torso. Pick. <laughs> he's giving a little flex too and i was like oh all right this so, is someone yeah. new i'm and like <laughs> i was the fresh meat on the on the app and uh he hit me up and like to be honest i didn't message him first because i thought he was way out of my league um and then he messaged me and i was like nice <laughs> did you say you thought i was catfishing you? i totally thought he was a catfish yeah like, um, wow okay thanks <laughs> <laughs> but like what well, the cool thing is is like we actually talked for two or three weeks before we like even before met. we even met in person and went on a date, oh, wow. um, I was in grad school at the time and like working at a boarding school at the same time. So like my schedule was crazy and like he had just moved back from I college. graduated, yeah, he graduated undergrad, home. and so like we were just like we're twenty two. Like both of us were honestly not looking for a relationship. It's grinder for God's sakes. Um, <laughs> and and, we're twenty two years old. So. You years never old. know what you're gonna find. Yeah. No, I mean for sure. And then uh yeah, we went on our first date a couple of weeks later after it was like two or three days before our first date, we had like we were on the phone and it was like one of those like giddy middle school conversations. <laughs> like I'm not even kidding, like seven and a half hours on the phone. And I was like, okay, like this is, he's not fake. And, and, right. And, and pause though. Like at this point you still weren't publicly out, but no. you were, you were on the app. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I was one of those DL guys. Okay. Yeah. Obviously not anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, where it came from, right? Keeping things on the, on the down low. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we ended up going on our first date and like, obviously had interest in each other, like hit it off and. Neither of us were obviously expecting a lifelong partnership with each other at 22 years old meeting that way. Uh, but it just kind of, we didn't really have to try. It's kind of just like with the flow. We're like, all right, we'll see what happens and it happens. And yeah, here we are now. Luckily, he stuck around. <clears throat> How is uh, your love for each other any different than anybody else's? If it is different. No, it's not. It's the same, right? Yeah. Literally the same. And I think that, I think when people's, their mind kind of jumps to, when they hear gay, especially gay men, for some reason, it's uh, more of a, a thing than gay women. Mm. Uh, who knows body parts or what, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but I think that your mind jumps to sex. Yes. I think when Instantly. you hear gay men, you automatically maybe think of, I don't know why, maybe I'm the only one that's this way. No, I would say like, <laughs> no, more things no, portrayed in like the media or like TV, it's kind of like, it's just geared towards sex. So like whenever anyone thinks about it, it's like, oh, just sex. It's not just like... When you think about a heterosexual couple and you don't, yeah, you don't think about like, no, there's a, there's an actual relationship there. Yeah. yeah. These I, people love each other. The word I always use is like the LGBTQ community is like hypersexualized, 
right? Like that's mm. where my mind goes to it because it's like, you're exactly right. It's like, I post a picture of Joey and I on our Instagram, on Instagram. And like the comments are like, we don't care what you do in the bedroom. I'm like, I'm literally holding his hand at dinner. <laughs> We're on a date. <laughs> <laughs> this is disgusting. Keep Look that away. shit private, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like, it's not like, you know, I'm literally posting a porno of us. Uh, this I, is. <laughs> I have a question. Is it is it usually like a straight white guy that that, that comments from? 99% yeah. of it. Yeah. Or Middle Eastern. Uh, or Middle, or Middle Eastern. Eastern mm -hmm. You know, profiles. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I do have a question for you. Uh, Y'all know the comedian Mateo Lane? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, I, he's, I, he's, he's terrible. Yes. fucking hilarious. Yeah. But. Um, my girlfriend, she's, she's queer and we were having a conversation once because I was listening to something that, that, uh, he was saying, and he was talking about how, like he goes to different places and he just gets on grinder and like immediate right now as guys we're we're like, we are more upfront sexually than women are typically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. So the, I, he was saying that like, okay, as men straight or gay, you're, you're more upfront sexually Yep. now in the gay community for men, it seems that like. It is sexualized, but it's just like dudes that are like horny, horny. horny yeah. So, and it's like, yeah, we're dudes. We're still fucking dudes. <laughs> yeah. So is it like literally fucking dudes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to phrase this question. I don't know how to phrase this question, but it, it is hypersexualized, but isn't it more like more upfront sexual than like, uh, than gay women? Because as men, we are more upfront Sexual. about it right yeah and then also is For there sure. any like uh i mean if, if you've been in the closet right you've been suppressing all these urges i'll say and then now all of a sudden you come out and it's just like oh let's let the floodgates open on this motherfucker you know what i mean like there's got to be some of that too right um for me yeah i'm just lucky that the first guy i got with was really hot there you go <laughs> you you're know? very handsome thanks yeah take it. um but yeah i mean it is crazy like i remember like when i was on grinder like talking to Joey and like all the other guys, like some guys wouldn't even say hi. They would just send a dick. <laughs> oh, and it's like two or three in a row. And it's like, even if you still don't answer, they, they send like different ones. And it's like the first three still didn't get me. So I don't know why these next four are going to do it. <laughs> the lighting in this yeah. one's a little bit better though. Yeah. Hey, can we position it different? Like, yeah. Like not even a hello, yeah. not a what's up. It's yeah. just like dick. And, and that's the thing. Like when I was on Tinder, like, that's a guy move. Though. Yeah. Girls be like, I'm it's always exactly. getting dick pics. And I'm like, I don't get it, but I, I, I can, see that i can see that it makes a lot of sense what's funny now is like now that i'm openly gay like in a great marriage and everything like that like we don't get dick pics oh really like no. ever oh. it's always like my buddies at the gym sound like, sad about yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like come on it's like you're like guys like you're sending all the dick pics to the straight dudes <laughs> that obviously don't want to see your dick <laughs> you know like yeah it's more of just like it's I, I just think it's funny because like as an openly gay man, um, like I don't get dick pics, but like my straight buddies at the gym are like, yo, like I keep getting dick pics from guys. I'm like, so like, how man. do you stop that? And it's like, I don't get them you in the don't. first place. Yeah. So I'm curious what their profile looks like. It's usually blank. It's usually blank. like a burner oh, yeah. profile. Ah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you think a lot of people from decades ago were probably in the closet? And then like you kind of think of like I'm just going to use an example and I have no idea whether this person's gay or not, but like someone like a Joe Weeder or some of these different people that are, um, mm. they always kind of acted differently and nobody really knew how to pinpoint what they what? were doing or how they were acting. I but mean, maybe look at, look at Janae, right? Janae, right. Kroc, right? right. Like mm. she came up and, you know, I mean, obviously amazing power lifter, you know, military Marine, like just like the most, hyper-masculine dude in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously it was like battling these demons, you know, of, of being a trans woman. And I think it's, it's definitely like a societal shift that we're seeing that like, I think people are more accepting and comfortable, but like, especially like you talk about it. Cause like you've been gay longer than I have. Yeah. I just feel like, I think we were talking about it the other day too. It's like when I was in high school, like there was probably three gay people total in my whole entire school. What year was that for you? High school? I graduated in 2010. Okay. Yeah, same with me. So like, even like freshman year, like I didn't even like necessarily know what gay was, but mm -hmm. I knew I was different. And I came out when I was 17. So I was going from my sophomore year into my junior year. But even just out of the whole school, I probably graduated just my class was like 230 people. So like times four, like there was only three people. Yeah. And I was only gay men. Like I didn't even know any like lesbians or just like nothing. Mm -hmm. but, like now compared to today, like he works at a high school and I'm like, 
He's like, yeah, like we have like two or three trans students, like a couple. I'm like, what? Yeah. They're just like living their life. And like, mm-hmm. I'm like, how are the other students towards them? And he's like, they're just normalized. They just hang out and just do normal things. I'm like, mm. it just blows my mind compared to like when I was in high school, it was like taboo. You like, just don't talk about it. I work in a very conservative area of uh, Massachusetts. Uh-huh. Um, so to see that there are, you know, openly transgendered students and gay and lesbian, bisexual, like whatever they are, and they're just doing their thing. And it's like the trans students, like all the, like we have one student that is a, a female to male trans, um, trans student. And like, he's just one of the guys. Like nobody thinks about it. Yeah. They like use his pronouns, call him by his name. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, that's just, that's just him. Mm -hmm. Like, and nobody, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's really cool to like see that happening, you know, in an area that is, you know, politically shifted one way, but to like see that the students are just like, no, like that's just them. Like, and they don't even like think twice about it or question it. It's really cool to see that with like, Mm -hmm. you know, this younger generation that we see. Yeah. It is, it is really interesting because it's like so many people so many people will hear that and be like, "Oh, it's because these kids they're uh, they're being um, uh, they're being exposed to so many things so young." But this is a thing: you were gay in high school, although you didn't know you were gay in high school. Yeah, um, you just knew you were different. Uh, if you had something that allowed you to kind of understand that, or like you made a book, if you if you had something that allowed you to understand what was going on, you would have been more comfortable with yourself when you were younger. Not more comfortable, because it's not like you were uncomfortable, but you would have known, right? I probably would have came out earlier. You would have came out earlier, Yeah, you know? And it's like a lot of individuals, a lot of kids, it's just like they're they're able to kind of understand different levels of what it means to like different levels of their sexuality. They're starting to understand it earlier so they can identify as whatever at a younger age because they they have a better understanding. Now, some people are going to hear that and be like, oh no, that's horrible. But yeah. I mean. Well, that's it just to that point though. It's like, you know, everybody's going to be like, well, how do you know that they're gay when they're 12? It's like, well, how did you know you were straight when you were 12? You grew up and you're like, oh, that girl's pretty. I want to date her, right? Mm-hmm. In a gay kid's mind, it's, Oh, that boy's cute. I want to date. It's the same thing, you know, like, like, (laughs) and I I really want, you you just, you just know, Yeah. you know, it's not like, Oh, well, like they might think differently. It's like, no. Yeah. Like once you think that way, does that confuse you a bit? Cause are you you like, well, that kind of goes against like, like what norms do you think? Like, uh, almost like, like, do you, that you maybe have something wrong? Cause it's different than what you're exposed to around you or. Maybe you heard something different from your parents and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I mean, at least in my case, I thought like something was wrong, or it's like I never even like thought like even in TV, like there was nothing that I could relate to to be like, oh, like that person's like me. So I just automatically thought something was wrong, and I'm like, they're like, you need to be like this, and kind of put you in a box. Like you have to get married, you have to get kids, you mm-hmm. have to be religious, and it just was nothing that I kind of related to. So it was just a struggle. I, what I think like a lot of people are fearing is like, oh, like in seems said, they're being exposed. So then it's like oh, this is another option. Maybe I'll try that route. But whether you were educated on like homosexuality or not, it wouldn't change what the outcome would have been regardless, Regardless. right? Yeah, it wouldn't matter. But I do see that happening where it's like, oh, it's it's because they're being more exposed to it. They're deciding like... No one yeah. decides to just, I'm going to make my life really difficult yeah, and like go against really hard everything life. that everybody else wants me to do. But even though that's like, what's so bad about trying it? I, you know, I, I can't answer that. One. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know. That's if, actually, if, yeah. if some, if like they're being exposed to it, they're like, Oh, like maybe I'll give that a go. Like, okay. How many times have you tried something in your life? You're like, yeah, that wasn't for me. Or it's like, Oh, maybe I'm into this. Mm-hmm. Right. Like there's still nothing wrong with doing that. I tried being straight and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dennis Rodman, he said at some point, he was like, I'm not gay, but I also never tried it. Yeah. Something like that. Like mm. he like I he mean, was kind of at least halfway open to mm. it. Louis C.K. has a bit where he says, I'm not gay, but I've also never seen a dick I want to suck. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, a fucking good bit. Dude. Right? It like he's so like, valid. there might oh, be a day God. where I see a dick. I'm like, yep, I want that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> it just hasn't happened yet. It's like he just looks at her like, oh, that's the one. That's the that's one. The one. <laughs> that's it. I've been waiting. Oh, God. <laughs> I was watching the uh, movie uh, Dope Sick the other day. I don't know if you guys saw it, no. if you had an opportunity to see it. Uh, in the film, there's uh, a girl that's a lesbian that still lives at home, and she's just like 
I don't know. She's trying to like please her dad, so she works in the same like coal mine as him and all this kind of stuff. And he's, you know, she's trying to get like his appreciation for different things. Um, she, uh, she's yeah, she's lesbian, and she comes out and she explains it to her doctor, who's like a family friend, because it's like the only person she feels she can kind of open doctor. up to. And then so the doctor uh, mentions it to the dad in kind of a sideways sort of way, just talking about gay people in general. And then there's a scene at the dinner table where the dad addresses it to her and he's like, you know, I can't believe you're trying to talk through the doctor to me. Um, you know, if you've got something to say, you should say it. And he's like, this would be the worst, just so you know, this would be the, like, he's trying to ask her a question. Yeah. yeah. But then he says, this would be the worst thing you could ever say to me. Like, so if you tell me that you're gay, right. he's like, I'd rather be dead. And she's like, Shit. well, I guess you're dead. Yeah. And he then Jesus. he kind of blows up and he starts yelling at her and it's just... It's a really interesting thing because, I mean, she has no leverage. She's she's a young kid, yeah. so that fucking sucks, you know, in every way possible. Um, from his side, he just doesn't under he just has a total misunderstanding. Like, I don't think anyone should ever treat their kid that way. I think most in most cases, if someone treated their kid that way when it came to anything else, most parents would be like, uh, "That's that's not an acceptable way to treat your child." Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to certain things like this, I think that people think, oh man, I might react the same way. You know, if I found out my my son was gay, I would, that would, I would disown him. Really. That would be devastating. Like I want him yeah. to, you know, do X, Y, and Z, whatever things that you think he can't do because he all of a sudden tells you that he's gay. I think in people's mind, it like changes. Like he can't be a world's strongest man. I can't be a football player. You can't be these things, right? Yeah. That's the problem. I think it's, it's because again, like Joey touched on it earlier. It's like, Especially people that are, you know, of an older generation, right? Like they grow up seeing gay portrayed one way, mm -hmm. right? Like it's portrayed as typically outgoing, feminine, flamboyant men, right? That's typically all we see gay people as portrayed in media and really anywhere. So I think automatically when these people have this idea that, okay, well, my son's going to be gay, so he can't do this. Like, you know, he can't have a family, can't give me kids, like all that you stuff. You already it's put like, him in a box. It's like, this exactly. is the only thing that you are. And I just think it's like, <clears throat> it doesn't change the person you are fundamentally, right? And at the end of the day, like, even like, this is something like we talk about, you know, especially you mentioned, like I had the book that came out and it's like, growing up, I never thought I was possible. Right? Like, you'd never seen a gay strength athlete, ha never really seen a gay athlete, right? Yeah. Like, performing at a high level. Yeah. So it's like you always see, you know, the football players with their wives or their girlfriends. And so it's like automatically, as a gay kid growing up, you're like, well, I guess I just can't do that mm. because yeah. you don't see it. And I think that's one of the reasons, like, we have been so open and upfront about our relationship and our marriage and the amazing things that we do with our life because we're just trying to show everybody. And I hate using this word, but I don't think there's any better way to describe it. We're like just normalizing our relationship to everybody mm -hmm. to show them. Like what you said earlier is like, it's just love. <laughs> we're, right. we're just a married couple doing what we want with our lives. Yeah. And it's, you know, I think people just misconstrued it in so many different ways. Yeah. You know, the, the, especially nowadays, um, you see a lot of people getting angry at uh, the idea of representation, right? You see it especially with the, with Marvel stuff. Yeah. Like um, <laughs> there's this new, uh, this hero Kamala Khan, I forgot what who she's going to be, but it's this, uh, she's Miss like, Marvel. Miss yeah. Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. And you see the comments of that movie of like, oh, another uh, representation movie, blah, blah, blah. But people don't understand how important it is for other groups to see themselves portrayed in a positive light on screen. Like Black Panther was a big fucking deal. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Because black kids never had some type of superhero to look up at. You got Batman, you got Superman, you got Spider-Man. Like these are names rattled off. It's all white dudes. Yeah. And it's not a problem because I dig them and they're cool. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, you don't see yourself there. Yeah. There's a level that you don't, you don't relate to that. Right. So when you can have something that like a positive representation of a gay couple in any kind of sense, it's like, Oh, that's fucking sick. You know, cause an individual can relate. And I think that's one people, one thing, a lot of people that they see themselves in media so much, they don't realize how cool that is for them because that's normal for them. Well, I think like yeah. to Joey specifically, like Joey played soccer growing up, 
you know, and just recently we have a couple of openly gay soccer players now. And I just think like how much that would have changed for you. Like me. Yeah. I mean, I kind of was like not forced to play, but like I wanted to like my dad put me in hockey, put me in soccer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do figure skating. And he's like, <laughs> well, you're going to do hockey first because I had like all female cousins around the same age. And I'm like, I want to do what they're doing. Like, I want the white skates. I don't want the black ones. <laughs> it's like, you're going to get the black ones. But I played soccer like from when I was five years old and like. Yeah. All the way up until college. So it's man, like, my son keeps his cleats so clean. <laughs> his, bag. <laughs> his bag is so tidy; it's weird. But no, oh, man. What uh, happened for you when you uh, came out? Did you, did you tell your parents when you were? Oh wow, that well, my young story is different than his. Very like, different. He had like yeah. more of a positive vibe. So I came out to my mom and like all my like immediate family. Can you talk about your coming out story to your mom though? Because I think it's just the greatest thing. I mean, it's not that great, but like we were arguing. <laughs> Okay. just like a heated battle and like at the end I was like is it because I'm gay and that's how I came out to her and she was like well I already knew and I'm like why didn't you say anything to me <laughs> I was like it would have been so much easier and she's like I didn't know how to tell you and I'm like well I didn't know how to tell you either as I'm blatantly yelling at you <laughs> how old were you at this point I was six uh, 17 but she knew how long did she say she knew like how long did she know oh she said like she knew when I was a kid like I used to wear her dresses and wear her heels and she would like come I'd be at my grandma's and I'd be wearing them and she's like what are you doing and I'm like just playing dress up yeah <laughs> nothing is normal <laughs> but then like I told so I told everyone in high school oh, when I was man. 17 but I didn't tell my dad until I was 21 mm -hmm. in college and that didn't go like that was probably my worst nightmare. Like, was that probably really hard for your dad on multiple levels? Like maybe he's old school, but secondarily, just the fact that you and your mom, you know, already shared this moment, or was it? My parents were divorced. So oh, like, okay, I okay. grew up as a single child just with her. Like I saw him every so often, but it was still hard to like tell him. And I told everyone else, like on my mm -hmm. dad's side of the family, just because it was obviously easier. It's like your dad, you don't want to like disappoint him. But then I told him, and how I told him, I probably could have done it a little better, but I had a boyfriend at the time, and I was like, oh, like, I want to bring them home for Christmas. So I was, this like, talking to him on the time. phone. Yeah, and I was like, oh, would it be okay, like, if I brought my boyfriend? Because I thought it would be easier to say than having this whole drawn out, like, mm -hmm. dad, I'm gay. Like, how, what do you think? Like, just going on down that road. Mm -hmm. And I said it, and he, he just was like, no. And I was like, okay, like, why? And he's like, I... I just need time to process this. Like, I don't want everyone coming home. Like, I don't want him coming to the family event and like everyone knowing. And like, at this point, he didn't know that everyone else knew. Mm. So like, he was probably already mad at that. But then after that conversation, like I got heated, he got heated and we didn't speak for like 10 years. We recently Whoa. just started like communicating like this past year. And like, he has a whole new, like a whole other side of his family. Like he's married, like he has a son and he's, he's my half brother, but he's, a freshman in high school. So like we have a huge age gap difference. Mm -hmm. And he like started coming back into my life and trying to be like, oh, we're like this perfect happy family. And I'm like, well, you just can't negate these past 10 years of like you just kind of like casting me off, pushing me to the side. And like now mm -hmm. we're not a whole happy family. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, we're building on it, but my story is a lot different than his. And my dad's like a super Catholic, like religious person. And like, I was the only like male in my family that had my last name. So it was like, He's like, how are you going to carry on our last name? And I'm like, well, I, it's not really my, I don't think that's significant. Like he maybe go to CCD, he maybe get my confirmation. It's all this religious stuff that was like kind of forced on me. And I just knew at a very, very early age at that, that I was like, this is not for me. Like none of what they're saying in this book is relating to me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it was totally different than his. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Mine was great. <laughs> but yours was great. So, like your, your your parents and everyone was like cool and accepting. Yeah, I um, yeah. so I, I I alluded to the fact that like I had a straight phase. So I actually dated like a girl for a year and a half before Joey and I started da mm -hmm. dating, and um, I we were dating for about six weeks or maybe yeah. four weeks before I came out like to my mom and my dad and everybody. My parents were also divorced, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna go talk to my mom first. Like she had a lesbian sister, so. I kind of knew that that was going to go okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I go, I sit down, I was like, mom, you know, like I have some news. Shit you not. The first thing she said was, who's pregnant? I was like, well, <laughs> about that. quite the opposite. I'm gay. She goes, oh, thank God. 
<laughs> like, yeah. That quick. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, it was great. And um, so then she wanted to see pictures of Joey because mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm actually like seeing somebody and all that. So that was really good. My dad, I was a little bit more nervous about because um, he's like an Irish Catholic guy from Brooklyn, New York. Ooh. Ooh. Right. So I was like, okay, this could be tough. Like he loves Sean Hannity and Fox News. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be cool. So I remember I was like, we were going out to lunch and like, I'm sitting in the front seat of his truck with him and we're at, we're at this stoplight. And I was like, I just have to do it now in retrospect, not the best idea to tell him while he's driving. Um, but so I look over, I was like, dad, I have something to tell you. He's like, what's up? I was like, I'm gay. I'm like crying at this point and everything. And he looks at me, he goes, can I still say gay jokes? <laughs> I was like, that's what you're concerned about. Don't take my jokes away. He was like, well, he was like, like, are you, are you happy? Like, are things good? And I was like, yeah, like I have a boyfriend now. He's like, all right, cool. And that was that. Cool. And then, you know, a couple weeks later I came out publicly and ex- you know, my life story. just <laughs> became insane. You know, I, I have a question about that, man. Like I was raised Christian and I, I do a lot of thinking about the religion I was raised with now. I'm learning about other religions too. So I'm just trying to learn a few things, but it's interesting because that like, I know a lot, obviously like I grew up with a lot of people from that faith um, and individuals, it, it's so weird where fundamentally being homosexual is like wrong. Mm-hmm. It, it's so, so when, uh, it, it, I'm really curious about like how your father dealt with that through the years or what you have had communication with him, because it's like people have been tr- like tried having their kids go to conversion therapy and yeah. all this type of shit Wild. because quite literally within that religion, this is wrong. People will pray for their kids they and like pr- try to pray it away mm-hmm. as if it's like yeah. a demon Disease. because they truly believe that their children yeah. are going to hell. Right. That's why, like, uh, over the years, I've been like, mm, I need to rethink a lot of things <laughs> with, with Christian. I, I mean, truly, I, I really do, because there are good aspects, but there are aspects like that where you cannot reconcile because yeah. an individual, this is just, this is their reality. Yeah. And one thing I think that's a whole is like individuals who are of that religion, literally, they think that their, their sexuality is the right sexuality because it allows for procreation and all this other stuff but they can't even fathom the idea that someone being gay is okay didn't mean to rhyme that but (laughs) um but that's that that's one thing that's really kind of unfortunate because they can't put themselves in your shoes because they feel that if they put themselves in your shoes you are now a sinner and you're wrong and if anything they need to save you and it's like no You, you know you you can't really even Someone who's that strong with that faith, you can't convince them that it's what they're thinking is wrong or that what you're doing is right. So with your father and like yeah. with anyone in your family who's Christian, how have you guys been able to have those conversations? I think with my dad, like he, he say he's Irish Catholic, not, not really practicing. He's more spiritual. Oh. So he's like, he's actually an alcoholic. Um, okay. He's been sober for 11 years. Nice. Um, so he's found more spirituality, which I think is honestly the best thing for his and my relationship, because Mm -hmm. he looks at it as not from, you know, the religious standpoint, just more of like spirituality and overall wellness. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's what's kind of helped him. And also, like I said, like my aunt was a lesbian. She unfortunately passed away, but like when my parents were married, like she was a part of the family and a part of the life, a part of their life and stuff like that. So like he was exposed to LGBTQ community, the community and like grew up in Brooklyn, New York, worked in Manhattan. Like there's a lot of gay people there. So, um, I don't think it was too difficult for him, your my, family. Yeah. Cause at least you had like your aunt, like who exposed him to like someone that was queer. Like I wasn't the first queer person in my immediate family. Mm. So like they had no idea, but like, I would say my dad's more spiritual now than he was back then. But even like my aunts and uncles, like for example, like I have a cousin that's about to get baptized and like they're doing it at a super Portuguese church that's super Catholic. And I, they wanted me to be the Godfather. So like, Oh, like you have to do this many classes. Like, do you donate to the church? Do you like, how many times do you go? And like, you have to fill out this whole like packet for them to even like approve it. And she wants, she, one of my aunts wanted me to like lie that I was like married to a man. And I'm like, do you see the issue with this? Because you wouldn't ask one of my other cousins to do the same exact thing. You're, Wait, lie that you're married <clears throat> to a man or married? To, like, so she wanted you to say that you were married to a woman. Is that yeah. what she wanted? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, but even that they have to ask those kind of questions, even to just like 
get a baby baptized. Like, hey. So that's stuff I kind of struggle with. So I don't really know how to like talk to them without, I, I don't know necessarily bring it into a good light because they're just, I would just say stubborn. Yeah. So I'm still kind of like working on that. Like they kind of tiptoe around it with it's me. It's got to be difficult to not get mad, right? When somebody doesn't understand, when someone is so like misunderstanding that yeah. it sounds like just flat out rude or sounds like anti, but maybe they literally just, maybe like you said, they haven't really been exposed to it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think I'm not trying to more, make excuses, but I'm just thinking It's like, just lack of education. Yeah. And it's like, I do, I do get mad because it's kind of like, you're your own person. Like, you know how to read. Like, you mm-hmm. you can look at resources to kind of see this. It's like, it's not up to me to educate you. Like, yeah. Personal I'll, responsibility. Yeah. Like, yep. I'll teach you like whatever you ask me, I'll answer. But like, it's not my job to educate you on this. I think where the issue lies is too, is when you have to have those conversations multiple times. Mm. Cause then it's apparent that they are not trying to change yeah. their view. Mm. <laughs> um, and that's, I think that's where it's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm, I'm just gonna like, <laughs> I don't need you or I'm just going to get pissed at this point. Right. Uh-huh. You know, it's a, uh, it's somewhat, it's not funny. It's kind of funny to me when you're talking, when, you, <laughs> when you're saying a lot of these phrases, um, yeah, you remember when the whole George Floyd thing happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when that happened, you know, the amount of DMS I got from like concerned white friends are like, there's anything I can do. Oh no, uh, no, 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 it's fine. But this thing, it was all love. Okay. It was, all, it was all love. It was all love. Mm-hmm. But the amount of questions I started getting from white people, Right, Be- mm. and the thing is, I I actually didn't have a problem with it because certain people were just actually curious of mm. what is it like to go through the world being black. Well, yeah. like I said, it's all about the intention of the question. Yeah, yeah. And I had I had a friend of mine who's like, man, I'm so tired of having to explain shit to white people. <laughs> <laughs> and for all of our listeners on this podcast that are white, I love y'all. I love I I, I, ain't, I ain't blaming you guys at all. I'm just letting you, just say like this is just shit that we we talked about. All right, so. Hey, no hate. I love you. Got questions? Hit the brother up. Hit me up. Um, but, but it's like he was saying the same thing. He's like, I'm having the same conversation over and over. But at the end of the day, if there's someone that's coming to you and they've lived a different experience, they have no idea what it's like to be in your shoes. And if they're coming to you with questions as frustrating as it can be because you're answering the same fucking questions, it is fruitful to give them an inside scoop on the experience so that yeah. they can understand this is what it's like. It's very different from your experience, but hey, we're still fucking humans. We 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 go through the world with different goggles, but we still are human beings. Yeah. So it's like I it's just funny cuz like we <laughs> it's the same shit. It's very fucking similar. Marginalized groups, man. Yeah. There's not many difference between us. <laughs> and if, there are going to be some people that hear the the idea of marginalized groups and they're rolling their eyes right now probably yeah. cuz a lot of people do. But understand it's like um, when you are a smaller percentage of the population, there are you you you're you're grouped into a smaller group of people that you're typically going to chill with, right? Yeah. So it, it's like it, it's not a it's not a problem being a marginalized group or a minority group, but it's just like it is a different experience, yeah. and we're people are getting an education on a lot of those different experiences for sure. Do you think homosexuality is looked at differently in your community versus? Oh, 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 why'd you fucking have to do that? <laughs> Here's well, Pandora's box. Yeah. Would you like to open up? <laughs> um, so I'm Nigerian. Uh, so my mom's an immigrant. Um, so definitely in the African community, uh, it's 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 not common. You you probably still have a lot of people within the African community uh, that just are not my cousin my cousin who actually he he died a few years ago but his dad would never first off he never came out to his dad uh because like his dad just continued to be very stubborn and be like oh that's not true that's not true yeah. even though he's he's said it multiple times deny, yeah. um and just purely deny it we all knew but like he was he went he was going through a lot of mental turmoil because he like his family or some of his family just wasn't accepting of that. Right. Um, and I think the African community and, and the black community, black community more so in America is, is I think they're, they're more accepting of it now, but there's still aspects of that, that within the community are, it's, it's still a little bit behind. Um, my mom specifically, like she, she does a lot of hair now. So she has a lot of clients that are gay. She's never been, She's never been an, an individual who's been like, there's something wrong with these people. Because yeah. there are a lot of people who will say that there's something wrong with these people. One of my uncles, 
I was having a conversation with him when I was younger and we were kind of talking about this and he was very, very firm on it's wrong to be gay. And I was like, well, we have to love everyone, right, uncle? Like it's it's our job as Christians to love everyone. He's like, yeah. So so I was like, well, okay. Uh, if, if you knew somebody was gay, would you be friends with them? And he said, yeah. And then I said, would you invite them home to have dinner? He's like, no, I wouldn't want them to really be around my kids. And I was like, Hmm. <laughs> <Interesting. laughs> That's confusing. <Yeah. laughs> but you'd be friend with them. So yeah, I just wouldn't invite them to my home to have dinner with my kids, right? And oh, yo, 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 this is this is uh this is one thing that I was like, hmm. I was watching a video the other day. It was from this creator. I forgot his name. Uh, something Omanala. He did a. He went into the Grand Dragon of the KKK and he trolled the dude. Yes, so you saw, saw that, that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so he 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 acted like he was from the BBC and it has like twenty five million views, man. So you guys should watch. Blew it. up. <clears throat> Fucking blew up. And the Grand Dragon, literally, the uh, this guy was asking him questions and he asked him, "Well, uh, would I be able to come to your house for dinner as as a black guy?" He's like, "No." <laughs> it's like just just no I, I like keeping things separate you wouldn't be able to come to my house so the thing is i'm getting at here it's like it's kind of unfortunate especially for individuals who are christian who believe they're doing a righteous thing and believing in this word that's righteous uh to say that you wouldn't invite an individual to have dinner if they were a friend because of their sexual orientation mm, yeah. that is a very very tough thing to try to to rationalize. I yeah, think in the mind that that doesn't, if, if it's all love, it doesn't compute. It doesn't compute for no. me. Right. So to answer your question, yes, I do think, especially within the African community, there's, there's like still a bit of a, I guess it's a denial of the existence mm. of gay individuals and that actually being okay. But more people than in the past are open to it or accepting of it. Well, that was like the, the first year I went to world's strongest man was 2017 and we were in Botswana. Mm. Now, typically, World's Strongest Man invites come out, like, you get an email. It's like, congratulations, like, you know, and all this stuff. Um, my invite came from a phone call from the lawyers at IMG. And they said, hey, so we want you to be at Worlds this year. I was like, that's sick. They're like, but it's in Botswana. I was like, okay, where's that? <laughs> First question. First question. Um, and they're like, well, it's in Africa. And um, so homosexuality is illegal there. Yeah, yeah. In Africa, like, it's, okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> They're like, well, like we, we looked at the laws and it's pretty vague. It just says you can only be persecuted if, if you're found performing an unnatural <laughs> act. That's what the law said. I was like, okay. And they were like, so we understand if you don't want to come, uh, we'll save your invite for next year. Uh, but we do advise you don't bring your partner. <laughs> so Joey and I had a long, 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 long talk about this. And ultimately, yeah. we kind of decided, like, it's the first year going to World's Strongest Man. Like, this is kind of a really big FU moment yeah. to have an openly gay man competing in a country where it's illegal for me to exist. So I went. Um, and shit you not, two weeks before I left, two guys were thrown in prison for seven years for holding hands in public. Jeez. Yeah. 2019, I believe it was, Botswana they made- got Yeah, homosexuality is no longer illegal. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was- uh, it was wild. The open violence for the gay people in other countries is pretty, like, pretty crazy. The, the, even though the United States, like, people are still, like, it's, I guess there are a lot of things that we're, need, we need to be better at in this mm -hmm. country. Even so, this country for <laughs> any minority group is the best place to be. It is. In the world, yeah. In the fucking world. Like, it's the best place to be. Um, this is an aside. Uh, have you guys ever seen... The eat the poo poo video. No. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Do I want it? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, just. <laughs> have you seen this video? No, I have not. Yeah. Eat the, okay. Eat the poo poo African. Is it like poo, p o p o p o o p o o? Eat, eat so the actual poo poo. Uh, God, this this video, man. This was a hardcore meme when we were like, it was. It, it you, you see an African dude like kind of. Well, I'll just let you pick. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Wait, wait. Um. Oh, it's a poo-poo song? Oh, no, it's not a song. It's not a song. Eat, I mean, this one keeps eat, coming up. That would be oh, good. Oh, God, God, go up, Andrew. Go up, Andrew. Okay. Um, eat, eat the poo-poo meme? Auto-tune maybe? remix. All right, try wow. to, like, okay, if you this can, is a thing, huh? on your side, just try to find <laughs> the original okay. video. I got you. Now, when we were talking about that, when you when you mentioned it was illegal, there's this, there's this African guy 
who I don't, I think it was Ghana or something. And this video, you'll see it, but he's like, uh, President Obama, like, cause he, I think, I don't know if it was Obama who had it legalized, gay yes. marriage. Yeah. 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 So this African guy's like, in the United States, these gay people, they eat the poo poo. And it is, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wild how like, it, it, it's a hilarious video, but people actually believe certain things like, yeah, like just wild things about For those of you that believe that, I don't eat poo poo. <laughs> I don't either. No, I'm <laughs> just putting it out there, man. I wish, I hope you find it's that not, video, Andrew. Not a thing. It's got to be this. And one, when you right? do, let's pull it up. Yeah, I mean, it, For, you said Uganda or Uganda? Yes, you got. Oh yeah, please play this. Oh, you you want sound too? Yeah, I want sound. Are you man. sure? Oh, we're I, I think we're going to be okay. Experience, dog. This is a hilarious video. To make sure that sodomy and homosexuality <laughs> never sees the light of legality in this land of the Pearl of Africa. I've taken time to do a little research to know what homosexuals do in the privacy of their bedroom. One of the things they do is called anal leaking. Where <laughs> they, a, a man's anus is leaked <laughs> like this by the other person like ice cream and then what happens, even the poo poo comes out the other poo poo is out huh? and then they eat the poo poo what the, the other one they the do guys take a note <laughs> Stay where they insert their hand into the other man's hand and it goes all the, into the anus all the way and it is so painful they have to take drugs but they enjoy the it fuck, dude? Now, <laughs> Apparently, he's like way in the. He did like, a lot of research. I know. I was gonna say he was like <laughs> getting really he into the hundred percent. Got on to doing lit. that research. He's like, it looks like this. You pull this cheek apart. You pull <laughs> that cheek apart. <laughs> I watched it not from experience. And he's yeah. like, don't just stick your tongue. You got your whole face oh, in there. He's like, wow. <laughs> at the end of this video, at the end of that video, he says something and all the people in the room scream like, ah, it's just. <laughs> oh. They run out of the room in horror. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder yeah. what that guy wrote down. That's kind of the game yeah. there. Yeah. Like, yeah. What notes are you That taking? guy thought that was really noteworthy. He's like, I better write this down. <laughs> oh my God. That video is too funny. Anyway, Damn. now you know the eat the poo poo. Eat meme. the poo poo. Eat the poo poo. Damn. Forever. Yeah. No, I gotta check out all the remixes now. <laughs> I know. That's like there's so a lot of remixes. Yeah. You said something interesting earlier when you said you've been gay longer than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know, for, for, for a straight guy, like throws you off a bit. So like, wait a second. <laughs> Um, so I, I just said like, so I'm, I'm a late bloomer, right? Yeah. Like I didn't come out till I was 22 years old, lived a very heteronormative life for majority, like all of my younger years, right through high school and college and everything like that. And, um, you know, it just, um, I had suppressed like those feelings mm. for a really long time. I grew up thinking that I needed to have a wife and kids and that like white picket fence life. And that's pretty much all I had focused on. I mean, I say that, but I also like looking back, um, like I never had girlfriends growing up. Mm. Like I always kind of think of myself as like almost as an asexual kid. Um, like in high school, I was unbelievably involved. I was a football player. I was a cheerleader, um, obviously lifting weights. I was class president, had a band, like I did, did a lot of things. And I was never one of those guys that was like, oh yeah, like I need to be in a relationship or have a significant other. And that was never like a thought of mine. Mm -hmm. And that it kind of carried through, through college, um, you know, and then, you know, met a girl and decided to get in a relationship and realized it wasn't for me. But I also think like, it was really important for me to have that because when I came out, like I ended that relationship because I was finally dealing with what was in the back of my mind for so many years, you know, like I'm in a relationship with a girl, but like jerking off to gay porn. Right. I'm like, this, this isn't Doesn't right. Matter. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. but like, I didn't want to accept myself for the reality of what my life was going to be. And, you know, I just kind of had, I don't know why or, or what caused it, but like, I had this moment one day when I woke up, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Mm. Like it's exhausting. It's exhausting to like wake up every day and like have to pretend to be somebody or not. Right, like imagine you going through life every single day and you have to think about how you're going to interact with your friends mm. because you don't want to say the wrong thing or like lead them in a certain way. Yeah. Um, how you walk, how, you know, just like thinking, like cognitively thinking about every single action you perform that day. Mm -hmm. um, it's fucking tiring. And like, I just got to a point where I was like, I'm, I just can't do this anymore. Um, ended that relationship to kind of like, 
explore my sexuality and like kind of, I say it was like this journey of like self realization, right? Like finally like bring to light all of these thoughts that I put in such a dark place for so long. Um, and you know, I was just really fortunate that not long after I met him and like that honestly helped me so much because like we met and like we first started dating, I was like, Oh shit. Like this is what it really means to be happy. Cause I had never felt that. Mm hmm. Like I had never been able to just like let my guard down and be myself and like, you know, let people in to see the real me. And like, once I was able to do this, I was like, oh fuck, this is, this is amazing. It's like you don't want to like, go back. No, like, like, oh, like, it was, like. yeah, it was like my entire life just opened up. I know you're enjoying this clip, but listen up. We have this beef company, Piedmontese Beef, that no matter what diet you're doing, whether it's low fat, high fat, carnivore, keto, whatever, they have perfect cuts that are going to fit your diet perfectly. And the cool thing, Andrew, mm -hmm less connective tissue. So you're not going to have those grisly, nasty things that you have to spit out when you eat beef. That's what those are? That's what those are. Oh, and so, Piedmontese doesn't have that. They don't have that because the cows are jacked, lack of connective mm -hmm. tissue, buttery when you cut into it. Amazing taste. So Andrew, how can they get some Piedmontese? Yes, sir. It's over at Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. At checkout, enter promo code POWER for 25% off your order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Again, that's at Piedmontese.com, promo code POWER. Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. And now, I know you just mentioned, you mentioned like having to cognitively think about the actions you take and the way you interact with other people. Do you feel that you still do that to an extent? Like both of you guys, do you feel that there's a level that you still do that? Because like if, if I'm being real, like there are things that I do because like, especially when I go and meet new people, I'm very aware of the way I look. I'm 6'2", 250 and black. <laughs> and when I don't smile, I look like I'm menacing. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that I'm, you know, I'm, I, I smile. Like with some people, I'll make my voice a little bit higher and a little bit softer so they feel a little bit more comfortable around me. What was the face me? you made? Like when you like are like uh, <laughs> letting somebody go or whatever? What, letting remember? somebody go, what do you mean? I don't know, you made that face. You were like that little like- Oh, the- the little wit, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's so cute. That's, I know. <laughs> <Like> the <little laughs> wave. That's the little wave to the uh, old white guy that he walks past, right? Yeah, the yeah. old guy who's kind of like, you know, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I won't hurt you. <laughs> like, yeah. No, seriously, like there are certain things I do so individuals aren't threatened by me because I'm very aware of the way I look. Now for, for you guys, do you do you still navigate in a different type of way? Do you, I know maybe not to the level you used to, but is there still some of that or no? I for do. me, no. For him, yes. For me, I'm just like, fuck it. This is me. You're going to get it. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's, that's also the mentality I had when I came out. Right. Cause I'm like 22 in grad school and I just had this like, fuck you mentality where I'm like, well, if you don't like me, I don't need you. Mm. Right. And, that, well, and that you're a it. big dude. So it kind of helps. Yeah. That does help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, so like, on the other hand. Well, for me, like, once I start talking, it's like glitters just shooting out of my mouth. So I can't really, like, hide that. But it's like when I go to different, like, groups of people, like. That's <laughs> a very talented special <laughs> thing there. But it's like you're saying, like, you soften your voice. Like, I try to, like, deepen my voice. But uh, that doesn't really work that well. But it's like when I hang out with more of, like, my straight guy friends or, like, all my girlfriends that, like, their boyfriends or husbands or whatever, like. I do kind of act more like not myself. Like I kind of contain myself more than mm -hmm. if I was just with them, like I'm way well, more gay. Yeah. That's the thing is like, he, you know, like even just like to come on this podcast, he had anxiety about like, like, are there things I can't say? Like, how should I talk? Like, how can I act? Like all of a sudden, I'm like, no, they really don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> we're popping his cherry here today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. This is Joey's first podcast. You're great for podcasts too, okay, by the way, thank man. You. I'll you're, take you're, it. You're, you're fucking awesome. So, <laughs> Yeah, good shit. Be and, gay, babe. Yeah. Be gay. Well, it's kind of thing I'm still like working through even now. Like I'm 30, and it's like all that stuff I had to deal with when I was younger is like you don't be who you are because no one likes that. So it's like still now I'm trying to like okay, like I can be my be myself, and it's like you're saying like you just need to not give a fuck and just do it and let them mm -hmm. deal with the consequence of how you, they react. Uh, mentioned earlier someone like Janae like uh, having demons to battle. Is that the way that maybe both of you guys have felt in the past, and do you still feel that way to some extent? I don't necessarily feel that way any anymore um, because like I said, it's like I understand what it means to be happy and experience like real love. Right. And after faking it for so long and now knowing what it really feels like, um, you know, I just want to live in that space. Like I don't want anything to get in the way of that. Um, so for me, it's yeah. like I, I dealt with it for a long time, but I also just have this, kind of weird inability to just like say okay it's over it's done get out of here and i don't think about it anymore mm. right and i think that's a strength of mine he's a little bit more analytical 
Yeah, like for me, it's like that's kind of why I like stayed like playing sports even when I was like younger. Like I didn't want to play them, but like it was one way to like be masculine and like even working out now. Like that's why I love like lifting weights because it makes me more. Ma- I don't want to say more masculine, but it just like brings me to that line instead of being so feminine because just that's just naturally how I am. And it's like I would say more internal like demons like with myself, like not with like other people. Yeah, but why is yeah. being gay like? intertwined sometimes with being more feminine do you think like just because it's not like portrayed as that but like when you think of it it's like always femininity and just like being super queer it's like you're dainty and little and like you want to be skinny it's like that's why i like working out because it's like i just want to be different like i like the other side i like being sought out because i i'm big i lift weights but then it's like when you see me and i don't talk it's like oh like it's a straight dude over there like okay but then i when i open my mouth and they're like oh okay hey what's he up not <laughs> yeah yeah especially i mean honestly with how it's with how being gay has been portrayed in tv shows like when i look back at old tv sh- like will and grace or any tv show where you saw a gay dude he was always like he always had his voice high and he, he was always yeah. doing the hand movements the and hand it's like move- yeah exactly and that's what you automatically think of when you think of someone who's gay well and that's like for me it's like i present very masculine right like i'm a 285 pound strong man with a mohawk and um when when i tell people when i say like oh i'm gay or like people see a ring on my finger and they'll say like oh you're married like what's your wife's name and i'll be like oh well like i'm gay like my husband's name is joey they're like oh you don't look gay <laughs> like oh okay. i'm like well sorry i don't have my rainbow mohawk today <laughs> um you know but uh, like that's that's been like one of our really big goals is like making people realize like gay doesn't look one way mm-hmm. right like but you can be both it's like you're on that spectrum of like you're masculine and you're feminine and it's just about kind of like meshing between the two. Oh yeah like yeah, you're yeah. not just super gay and feminine all the time it's like you're still masculine even though you're femme mm-hmm. yeah you know still have my feminine like we watch rupaul's drag race and i wish i was up there on the catwalk and heels <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> You know, even though I was before. told by a drag, ugh, this is like one moment in my life. Oh my God, you never really lived this down. No, it pisses me off. <laughs> so we were at a drag show uh-huh. and one of our friends, she was performing and she comes up to us and she comes up to us. She's like, oh my God, you're gorgeous. We should get you in drag. You have such an amazing body. All this stuff, like hyping him up hard without a beat turns to me, goes, you'd make a very awkward woman. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. You're like bullshit. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, man. I might have like football pads for shoulders, but we could make it work. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm never going to forget that. Or that one you. stung. Oh, yeah. it really did. It's like, come on. Yeah. That hurt. Especially just because, like, she was hyping him up so much, and like, obviously, he's beautiful. He would look great as a woman. I don't necessarily agree if I look good as a woman, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I could walk in heels. But everything else about that, but yeah. yeah, just like the the quick wit and how she turned around and just came out. That I was like, fuck, that stings. That's Joey, you're hilarious. training for a strongman competition coming up soon, right? Yeah, July 23rd. And you've competed before in strongman. Yeah, so I've done a couple of shows, and I've done mostly novice. So now I'm like doing an open class. So mm-hmm. 175. So I actually sit at like 190. So I have to cut. It's got a little water cut coming yeah. up. Do you guys train together or is like that not, and it doesn't work well? We do for yeah. the most part. Yeah. We're, um, we try to train to it together as much as possible. Like it's really cool to be able to like share that time together. Like we both work full time jobs. And if we weren't training together, we'd see each other for about 30 minutes a day. Right. Whoa. So it's nice yeah, to we have be able to schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to be able to like, go to the gym with each other, spend some time. And it's like also support each other, right? Like I'm training for world's strongest man, but like I also put as much emphasis into his training, getting ready for his contest, you know? And like, he's very modest when he talks about himself training strongman. Like he's done like four shows and he's always been on the podium. Oh shit. So like he's, he's Decent. good. Um, and you know, so it's just, it's exciting for me now too. It's like, you know, I'm at world's strongest man this week. And then like the folks is going to switch to his prep you know, for his show. And that's where we're going to put a lot of energy. And it's like, it's exciting to be able to like share that, you know, share a sport like this with, with you, with your partner. What made you, I mean, other, like, was it like that he did strongman that had you interested in it? Or were, was there something else that you're like, I want to do this? Well, even before I met him, like I played sports in college, but yeah. like, I never did like the lifting portion is more so because I was timid to like, even go in there and be like, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like all these people are going to look at me. Cause it's mm-hmm. all these like hyper masculine dudes in there. So yeah. I'm like, I already look like an idiot, so I'm not going to do it. But then when I met him, it, that's, he, he taught me how to lift. Like He taught me all the form and technique, so I kind of gained my confidence from that. And Just being more, because like, I'm, I'm a feminine guy, so doing strongman kind of helps lean me into that masculine side that I 
always wanted to like kind of have, but just mm. never really knew how to do it. Yeah. He's also really annoyingly athletic. <laughs> like mobility and shit too. Oh, and just like he's strong. The yeah. first time he ever did Atlas stones, he loaded a 275 stone. What? Yeah. I just, first time he ever did a barbell snatch. I'm a visual yeah, person. Five. Whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, like that's time, not normal. First time you ever did a barbell snatch, you did yeah. 205? Yeah, full squat, overhead, like, oh, you're feeling some type of way. Yeah, no, because I, <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I just think I blow out my shoulders and my yeah, hips no, and everything it, else. Yeah, it was like, everybody was like, the fuck? How, what? <laughs> like, it just, yeah. That's crazy. So, I mean, yeah. honestly, like you being an athlete has helped with that because even when you're in the gym, like the way you move, you have good range of motion, different joints and stuff. Yeah, I have good mobility too. Yeah. That's so like, crazy. Well, I think that's from like track. Like I did hurdle. So I did 110 and I did 400 hurdle. So like I always worked on mobility in my hips. So yeah. like that just like kind of carried through until now. That's what do you guys fight about that might be different? And what do you fight about that might be the same? As regular couples, Ooh. you were talking about like you you talked a lot about uh, going to that event uh, where homosexuality is illegal or the the world's strongest man competition, and you guys had a long discussion. Do you guys like? Do you even argue? Like, do you feel any particular different way about being gay than he does, perhaps? And you kind of butt heads, or do you guys feel similar enough in those areas? That kind of stuff. I think I for me, similar. it's like I'm I'm really confident in being a gay man. Right. And like, I want to walk down the street and hold his hand and I want mm -hmm. to be able to like show off that this guy's my husband. Um, and I think like that took a lot. Of, it took him a lot of getting used to. Right. And I was like, out before him. So it's kind of that's like, very normal for couples to. Yeah. That one yeah. cup, one person in a couple more touchy feely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think like we just have regular stupid fucking arguments <laughs> yeah, like my pet peeve is when i have to like say something more than once to him especially like when he's like five feet away and i'm like looking at him and i'm like i say something he's like what what and i'm like oh my fucking god yeah. <laughs> that's pretty that's that's a normal occurrence every he's like week. you're mumbling i'm like you're literally looking at me just read my lips if you can't hear me <laughs> i i have a question i know we talked about this in the last podcast but you mentioned that the strongman community has actually been pretty cool yeah. Like with, with the, how, how's your been experience also been with like the strongman community going into it, competing? Mm -hmm. Has it pretty much all been positive? Yeah. For the most part, I don't That's even good. think like negative wise, I've had any experiences, but I would also kind of lean that towards him. Like people obviously know who I am. So it's kind of like preface mm. that like, they're not that they're going to be nice to me, but they already know who I am. So gotcha. it's like, they, well, they already also know, know if of they're going to be mean to him. They have to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely don't want to do that. No, no. Yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, we brought it up earlier in the podcast, but the book that you came out with, I don't know. Strong? If, yeah, Strong. Yeah. No, how long ago was it? But what spurred you to make a book? And it's it's kind of like an autobiography book? Yeah, so it's a children's picture book, but it's also an autobiography. Um, so I was actually, I had broken the log press record, the American log press record in April of 2019. Okay. Um, and the story was getting some traction. It was pretty cool. And I was contacted by an author who had this idea to write a children's picture book. And um, I, it was never really a thought of mine, you know, but after looking up, um, Eric Rosswood is the other author. And he had some books published already in the LGBTQ space, mainly about um, parenting. Um, and I was like, okay, like he's a dad, you know, and already an author, like this could be really cool. So we got on the phone and we started talking and it really became – uh, just this amazing collaborative process. It took three years to get the book to come out. Yeah. But, you know, I think when going through the story, a lot of it was like, first off, like we don't, it's part of the angle is like, we don't get to see like real life superheroes, especially as LGBTQ people. So for, for this book to be about somebody that is alive and still achieving these amazing things was a really cool angle. Um, another thing that came up early in our conversation though, was we didn't want this story to be a coming out story. It's a part of my story, but we didn't want it to be the main focus, right? So like when you read the book, like Joey coming into my life is very casually mentioned. It's not like the, it's not the pinnacle of the story. Um, what the story really is about when you boil it down is like, once you accept yourself for who you are, you can achieve whatever you want in life. You don't have any more barriers holding you back. Mm -hmm. And um, we really wanted this just all inclusive message um, that kind of spans sexuality and age, right? Like the amount of times I've heard like parents read this story, they're like, 
I've learned something about myself from reading this book. Um, it's really, really cool to see. And, and the book's only been out for about a week and a half at this. Well, two weeks tomorrow, actually. Um, oh, when, it's freshly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It came out on May 10th. <clears throat> oh, snap. Yeah. Okay. I think I saw like it, uh, it hit the top of the charts. You posted it hit the top of the charts for children's. So work. we're actually still the number one new bestseller is children in children's biographies yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. After, even after being released for like two weeks. Wow. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. <laughs> That's really fucking cool. So yeah, the story really does go like through my life. It goes through, um, it's like real events. Yeah. Like we tried to make it as true as possible. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I see a lot of people spending a lot of time, you know, fantasizing about who they're not. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, especially with social media and seeing all the different, uh, you know, people with the nice cars and nice bodies and, uh, this and that. And I think it's easy to get kind of caught up in, uh, maybe being stuck on like old beliefs about what you can actually do or who you can actually become, yeah. you know, that it's, yeah. it's stifling to people and it's can be difficult to get up off the couch when you're constantly have, you're constantly fed. I mean, it's called a feed. You're constantly feeding yourself yeah. other people's story. And then you might kind of feel inferior. You might think like, well, that story is not for me. How do I go? How do, what about me? How do, how do I, do I, I go out? figure that out? You yeah. know, I think it's can be uh, crippling for a lot of people. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, for us, we've just, you know, I think it's, even though we're talking about social media, how it could be negative also, it's also such a positive, Cute. you know, because of, you know, with us, like we just share our love, right? Like it's, it's about lifting in love on our pages. That's really mm -hmm. about it. And like, yeah. and some advoca advocacy stuff. Cause obviously we have this amazing platform for positive change, but like the amount of times we get messages, um, whether it's, teenagers or adults saying that like because of us being able to share our story and just being unapologetic about it it makes them feel more comfortable in their skin makes them realize like oh like i could have a future like that too and i think that's like one of the most empowering things about you know what we do on social media yeah and, and, and mm -hmm. you know it, it's really dope because it's like if somebody let's say that somebody doesn't like this for some reason or is, is Oh, I'm sure the comments are going to be unreal. <laughs> yeah. I think a, a really, a, a lot of people don't ask themselves first off, like why they believe what they believe. Um, because it's like, when you mm. think a certain thing, you may have thought it for a very long time, whether it's about yourself, like, why do I think I'm this? Or why do I think I'm this way? Or whether if it's about other people, it's just like, it's a belief and it's true. Yes. But when you sit down and ask yourself, why you believe it and you really kind of try to work that out and articulate it you'll probably find a lot of holes and a, a lot of things that just are not rational or you all. don't have an answer or you don't have an answer well, that's my thing too it's like your belief is your belief but my existence is a reality so it's like you can believe that belief with no tangible like evidence mm -hmm. but like me standing in front of you being who i am is like no that's a mic drop moment what you just said <laughs> <laughs> that, that was pretty fucking, fucking dope bar. yeah 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 <laughs> Um, but what I do find, which is funny is like in my position, like I'm comfortable enough where like, I'll call people out about it, but kind of in a passive aggressive way. Mm -hmm. So like just this week at world's strongest mm -hmm. man, I was watching the CrossFit game semifinals and I'm sitting down at a table watching it and somebody comes up, they're like, man, why are you watching CrossFit? That's gay. I was like, well, I am. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're and like, he goes, you am what? Watching CrossFit? <laughs> and, um, he goes, oh no, like, you know what I mean? I was like, no, I don't. What do you mean? Oh no. And he couldn't answer. He was like, uh, 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 and they just kind of like walked away. Yeah. Right. So like when you challenge people in that way, like, I think it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a fun moment for me. Cause I'm like, I got you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain to you what yeah. gay is. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah like you. I just, I also, like I said, it's kind of like that just fuck you mentality where I'm just like, I really don't care what you think in this moment. Like yeah. what you said is wrong. I'm going to let you know about it. Mm -hmm. How do you, uh, talk to yourself, you know, with lifting these fucking giant implements that you're going to be lifting this weekend. Uh, you're really gifted. I like the overhead press, but there might be other movements where you're like, oh, fuck, here come. How do you, <laughs> how do you uh, get out of your own head and have better self-talk, better confidence in yourself to get better at these movements? I think the biggest thing and the biggest transformation in the way I compete is my number one priority every time I step on a competition floor is have fun. Right. Um, I lost that for a long time and I became a terrible strong man, a terrible husband. And I was putting too much pressure on myself to succeed. And because I was doing that, 
it was decreasing my performance. The only way to have fun would be to be prepared, right? Because you yeah. want to do well. So if you're prepared, the and, funning might kind of take care of itself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, a great example of this is at the Arnold from this past year. Um, I had an awesome performance, was actually in the lead after the first three events, even into day two. Um, kind of shit the bet on the frame carry, which like I knew was going to be a tough event for me going in. You're right. It's an 880 pound frame, no straps, up a ramp, and I have tiny chubby hands. <laughs> Um, you know, and I'm going Tiny against these hands. monsters yeah. and grip is just one of those things. Like you work on it as hard as you want and it gets a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's mm -hmm. frustrating as hell. So going into that event, like I trained it and I knew going into it, I was like, well, if I can pick it up, it's a PR. <laughs> right. And I moved it like 10 feet, right. Ripped my hand open. And I was like, ah, that sucks. That's going to pull me off the, out of first place and off mm -hmm. the podium and everything. And I was kind of in my feelings about it because I had these goals set and stuff like that. And right before the final event, um, you know, we had this stone to shoulder event. It was this natural stone, 419 pounds. Um, and it was just yeah. a beast. And it, like Joey came over to me and he could see I was getting into that space again, where I was like kind of stoic. Um, you know, not focusing on anything else, almost getting tunnel vision. And he comes yeah. up to me, gives me a kiss on the head. He's like, Hey, just go out there and have fun. And like, it just kind of smacked me out of that. I'm like, shit, you're right. Like I'm getting, I get to go on that floor and lift this thing in front of 6,000 people. Like how fucking cool is that? Yeah. When you right? already had a great performance. So it's kind of like, yeah. And you know what? I shit the bed. I didn't lift the stone, but I was like, you know, I stood up after that. I waved to the crowd. I was like, this is awesome yeah. right and like if i stay in that mentality um i'm able to just kind of like get through those events that i know i'm just not going to do as well on and just know that like i'm still here for the right reason do you do better with your own self-talk uh, going into the gym now whereas before you had a lot of reservations about it yeah it's a lot better now but like even till this day i still do it's like it kind of like <laughs> like lean towards him to kind of like it's like when you you can give yourself your own advice but like hearing it from mm -hmm. someone else even more so like not even from him it's like other people at the gym and they're like i'm his husband so it doesn't like count because <laughs> i'm like you have to say that <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, definitely yeah. better like than it was when i first started going at the gym yeah like he's confident enough now like he he used to be so in his head that like when we would go to our gym a gym we go to four to five times a week i would have to walk in first <laughs> because he just like still had that anxiety right yeah like what a lot of people don't realize is like the gym for a gay man is terrifying because you know there's like and i'll say I like it'd be more like a haven <laughs> well <laughs> depends on the gym oh true um, <laughs> i was picturing west hollywood <laughs> yeah no sorry <laughs> that vibe yeah <laughs> but like the mesh walking, shirts yeah. and stuff walking into a strongman powerlifting gym as mm. a gay man right like it's gonna set off some alarms mm. and i would say like as gay men we we probably stereotype like we shouldn't, but like we have this fear in our mind that it's like, well, if I need to like ask for a spot, is he going to think I'm hitting on him? Yeah, right? Like, like and, and we play those scenarios out. Depends on how you ask for a spot. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little butt tap. Hey, you busy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd be like, whoa. <laughs> now I'm not. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but I think it's like we work up these scenarios in our head and it like just gives us a, that anxiety where like then we just like, well, you know, I'm just not going to go do it. And for him to step into our home gym, Lightning Fitness for the first time and like to see him enjoy it and like what he was doing, like was a really, really cool moment. And that's, you know, it's just been a, a really great part of the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when you were talking about those stereotypes, I think that's a stereotype that some straight guys have that they shouldn't about gay guys. Yeah. Like one of the reasons why they may feel uncomfortable around gay guys is like, is he attracted to me? Like, yeah, chances he's checking me out. <laughs> chances, yeah. chances are probably like not. Nine times out of ten, no. <laughs> exactly. But like that's that's one thing that I think is like some weird barrier that some guys need to get through. Like not every guy that's gay thinks you're hot. Well, it was funny. I was having this conversation. I forget with who, but they like had that mentality. And I was like, well, when you look at like all these girls, like, do you think they're hot and want to like have sex with them? He's like, I mean, most of the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to change your never mind. mind. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you know, I'm also curious about this, Joey, as yeah. you've gotten bigger, because like you're pretty jacked now, mm -hmm. right? What kind of confidence has that brought you, if any? Like how? Like, oh, huge. Yeah. 
like even just like being able to walk like into anywhere like more so i would say it, it helps with my family like cuz oh. they're just so like traditional and it's like they see me as that like smaller skinny like i was a twink in high school like i was hoping you were going to say that <laughs> Like just hairless, like super skinny. Like I was a hundred at like forty pounds, and like then I started working out. They're like, "What the like? You're just like bigger now." So they, I feel like they give me a little bit more respect, or just they treat me differently now that I'm like bigger. Especially like I have like all girl cousins, and we're like all around like a year or two, and mm-hmm. like all their boyfriends like we're around. Like they treat me differently now because I'm bigger than them now, and I'm yeah. stronger. So it's like not that they gave me shit, but like they would poke at me a lot mm-hmm. and now they don't and more so because I poke back so they're like oh shit okay never mind I'm gonna lose this battle yeah <laughs> yeah I think like oddly enough like you know I started lifting partially because I was injured but partially because I couldn't do anything else when I was 13 but there is a level of insecurity that getting bigger does help with I mean it's not thing that a lot of people talk about but like putting on some muscle will give you some extra confidence in certain situations because physically you are, you you feel like a more physically dominant human being at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you need to get as big as possible, but it can absolutely help with any individual's confidence. Yeah. And it has with me, it has with so many people I know. So it's just like, that's why we love, that's one of the reasons why we love this shit. Yeah. Keep doing it, yeah. yeah. Is there anything uh, like dudes in the gym can be better at uh, to be a little bit more inclusive? I think it's just getting rid of the getting rid of that thought, right? Like that, like oh, this you know guy's hitting on me, or like I think just any preconceived notion of what they feel a gay man is, just like throw it out the window and treat us just like any other guy, right? Like yeah, just somebody. Just I think it's just that's just gym culture, yeah. right? Like it's like you hope that everybody that's going to the gym is going there to better themselves, mm-hmm. and if you have that mentality about everybody in the space around you, their sexuality shouldn't have any bearing on how you treat them. And I think that's, um, it's a, you know, a, a pie in the sky type wish to hope for that. But it really is just like, you know, if Joey was in a gym and he came over to you, Mark, and was like, Hey, like, can I get a spot? Like, it should just be like, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, but I think it's just like, again, like people just have those preconceived notions that mm-hmm. make that conversation different. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I don't want to say a big part of our show, but sometimes we play around on this show and we'll start talking about random things and then we'll talk about how like we'll sleep together. Uh, <laughs> we'll make out whatever, you know, we'll joke Prove around. It. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good point there. Yeah, Prove it, Andrew. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, I can literally play like any episode where oh, we're yeah. talking about something, you know, kind of, yeah, we kind of gay. We, yeah, we, yeah. we go there. <laughs> No, it's gay. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely gay. <laughs> so we all have, you know, female significant others. Is it okay for us to joke around amongst ourselves and say l- literally like gay jokes and stuff, but we are just playing around. We are not gay. Is that okay? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's how you, how would you use? Yeah, the we're not doing like it maliciously like, or anything. Yeah. I just want to make, cause like. Like Mark oh, said, we're, we're like fucking... the tone of the jokes. Like, yeah. Okay, so now we're not like, like, yeah, that's gay. Not, no, like, no, 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 but no, it's no. like literally the things that we like. If you, <laughs> you well, say, like, what, what is a uh, super training gym? Strongest gym in the West. Gayest gym in the world. <laughs> I want to go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I mean. They're like, we just joke around like that. Like, that's not offensive. There's always a lot yeah. of gay yeah. undertones to like gym stuff, right? I mean, mm. spotting each other oh, and teabagging yeah. each other on the bench press and <laughs> yeah. spotting each other from behind and like Joey's pissed he didn't join the gym earlier. <laughs> See? It's like, wait, you can get Damn teabagged it. at the yeah. gym? <laughs> they do that? This is awesome. Do I tip somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Every Tuesday. <laughs> um, <laughs> bench day. No, I don't think there it's wrong, right? Like, cause like yeah. I'll even usually hop in on the joke. That's the thing. Right? It's like, like if you join in too. Yeah. You know, so I think it's like there was um there was like a couple of guys going on a trip together and they were like saying like they had to share a bed. Right. They're like, oh, like we're gonna cuddle. So I'm like, oh yeah, who's gonna be the big spoon? <laughs> <laughs> right. So like I'll jump in. And then but the funny thing about that conversation, it was like it actually divulged into like an actual conversation <laughs> that would work. And one guy's like, so there's like one like shorter, stockier guy and like one's taller, skinnier guy. And the taller, skinnier guy's like, Yeah, well, like I'll be the big spoon, like I'm bigger. He's like, I'm taller. He's like, no, but like I'm bigger, so I can like wrap you up better. Like they had a legit conversation. The I'm taller like, guy covers more ground. Like so help me move. Yeah. Help me move this desk. Let's try it in this room right here. 
<laughs> so like, I think like, oh, especially man. if you're around gay people and like, you know, you can like sense their personalities. Like obviously with us in this room, like, yeah. we're to- like again, we're probably going to jump in on the joke and you know, um, so I think it all depends on, uh, yeah, like the context, the intention and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. How cool. are you going to beat these guys this weekend? There's some real monsters out there, right? Dude. Oh, and uh, yeah. on the note of the Arnold, uh, if I remember correctly, you finished like fourth or fifth, right? Fifth place, yeah. Fifth place. And and I remember you came over to the booth that we were at and you were like, you were very happy and very content. You're like, this, Stoked. Is, this is where I kind of thought I would land. And I made a post about it kind of saying like how I thought that that was remarkable because you set out and did a lot of the things that you wanted to do. And the placing was just a byproduct of where you uh where you finished for the day so i qualified for the arnold for the first time in 2019 when i qualified for the arnold uh, for the 2020 year it was my goal to take top five i took sixth in 2020 mm. 2021 we didn't have an arnold strongman classic so i was like well i need to get top five right and like that was my goal and like that's why i was so ecstatic with the arnold because i was like i fucking did it like that's what that's i wanted right and so like there are some people that are like well you didn't win like that's not good enough i'm like no like I'm, I'm the shortest, lightest competitor here. And I just, I took second place in the squat with a 961 squat. Um, and like, I just took fifth place at the heaviest strongman Sick. competition in the world. Sick. Like I'm fucking pumped about that. Mm-hmm. You know? Even after the past two years though, like coming back to like a heavy competition. Like yeah. That. The past two years of, you know, health wise have been tough for me. You know, I ruptured my tricep in 2020, got testicular cancer in 2021. Um, and then, you know, come back, took sixth place at the Rogue Invitational right after testicular cancer, then fifth at the Arnold. And now we're here at World's Strongest Man. And this, this year's World's Strongest Man is a, it's a beast of a show. It's like stacked. 30 athletes, 20 of us could be in the top 10. Wow. Um, so in my group, I'm in, I'm in group three. I have the 2020 World Strongest Man, Oleski Novikov. I have the Shaw Classic champion, Trey Mitchell. I have Adam Bishop, who is attempting the deadlift world record in a mm. few months. Um, and, you know, myself. Then there's Gregor Shemansky, who's making his first World Strongest Man appearance since 2016, but he is a World Strongest Man finalist. Mm-hmm. And then this guy, Mika Toro from Finland, who is a giant. He's <laughs> six foot nine. Um, so that's my group and you have to be top two to get to the finals. Right. That being said, like, I feel fucking good. You know, I'm excited. It's, this is my first year back at world's strongest man since 2019 training went great. Um, I did everything I could that's within my control to be able to perform as well as I need to. The competition is just going to be hard. Like who everybody I've talked to, it's like looking at my group, whoever wins is going to have a perfect competition Mm -hmm. you can't make any mistakes if you want to win that group um so a little bit of pressure there for sure but um but i'm excited i'm i think i'm up for it you know i'm just ready to have some fun and do some cool shit who is kind of favored to win is there a i would say like looking at it we have like the pre like 2021 world strongest man is tom stoltman um and then i think martins is probably he's my favorite um, How big is Martins? I've never seen him in person. So he's, he's like, not like six huge. three, six three. Uh, walks around about three forty. Yeah. Okay. Um, plays a lot of video games, right? He does play a lot of video games. <laughs> His grip strength's great. Yeah, he's got those thumbs. <laughs> 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 but he, um, you know, he won the Rogue Invitational. Mm-hmm. He won the Arnold Strongman Classic. So he's riding a high right now, coming into World Strongest Man. He looks good. Um, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I will say like the events are a little bit lighter this year than they historically have been. So I think that's going to play into the hand of the, some of the lighter, like more athletic athletes um, over the bigger guys. But it's, um, yeah, I, I think this is probably the hardest year anybody has had to try to decide mm. who's going to be the top 10 finalists and who's going to be on the podium. And you always have to watch out for those uh, veterans like Brian, Brian Shaw. Mm-hmm. He yeah. came in second, I think, last year. Yeah. And he looks awesome. He has a Joe incredible. Ken as his coach. It's incredible. Um, and mm-hmm. he, you know, has really changed his philosophy as an athlete. And, you know, it's, I'm just happy to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. He's already four time world's strongest man, I yeah. believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four time world's strongest man. I think he's won the Arnold three times. Like, it's Shit. unbelievable. Yeah, it, we were just talking to the gym about like the safety of the strongman sport. But do you think that they lightened the loads to make it overall safer, even though you guys are doing more reps? I think they did it because of the heat this week. 
Oh. <laughs> in all well, safety, honesty, yeah. Really? <laughs> so it goes yeah, so it does okay, go with yeah, safety, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, I think I think a lot of it plays with the what we're dealing with this week. You know, mm-hmm. it's going to be over 100 degrees <laughs> for the first two days of competition. Oh, God. Um, so I think that's, that plays into it, but, um, you know, I think it's, there's been a trend in, in strongman over the past few years where it's kind of like the Arnold is seen as like the static monster of strongman competitions. Um, and worlds tends to show better all overall athleticism of a strongman. And I think that's amazing because even though the sport of the, the name of the sport is strongman, you have to be one hell of an athlete to do what we do. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's what drew me to the sport in the first place. And, you know, like I did powerlifting, loved it. But to be honest, like I got bored mm-hmm. just training it's the boring. three big, right? The three big lifts. And I had been an athlete in high school and I was like, I missed that feeling of of training like an athlete. And that's what I love so much about Strongman. I think that's like why you love it so much after being a college athlete. Yeah. You just become like well more rounded as an athlete. I think. Yeah. Thinking about all the things that you guys do, like even the nature of picking up an Atlas stone or anything where there's pulling involved, like like reaching and pulling, there's there's a lot of components that you miss out on in things like bodybuilding and powerlifting that actually allow you to be an athlete. Like there's so many different things for you guys to do and have to be good at. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. so this is the thirteenth year I've done I've done strongman. I did my first competition when I was seventeen. Whoa. I've never wow. once done a competition that has the same events in it. Every single contest has been different that I've competed in. Mm-hmm. Like, how cool is that? You know, like it's constantly like you're going to have, okay, there's a log press, right? But Some it could variation. be for max reps. It could be for a one rep max. It could be a part of a press medley. So it's always varied and you never know what you're going to do. Um, and that's just part of the excitement of the sport. Cause it's like, after you finish a contest, you're like, Oh, I can switch what I'm doing and train for something different, even though it's the same sport. Mm-hmm. And, uh, more recently you started working with Matt Frazier. I did. I did. Yeah. So, um, I'm a certified athletic trainer, um, you know, by school, but obviously strength has kind of been my life. And I, um, I met Matt originally actually through his fiance, Sammy, mm-hmm. um, her and I went to neighboring colleges, so we've known each other for years. And it was at the Arnold in 2020. After we did this new event, it was a stone event. It was like you had to press the first two, load the second two, and then carry the Husafeld stone. Had this like little iconic moment where I dove across the finish line with this stone to complete mm-hmm. the course. And we get back, and we're walking back to the athlete area, and Sammy goes, Rob? <laughs> I was like, hey, Sammy. Like, Obviously, I know who she was because yeah. I know who Matt is. And she's like, you do this stuff? I was like, yeah, I'm kind of good at it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm here. (laughs) So that kind of like just like sparked this natural friendship with Matt and the group and stuff like that. And then uh, a few months before the Arnold this year, Matt had reached out to me to um, because he was working with an athlete, Mal O'Brien, who's unbelievable, unreal. She's just a freak of nature. And. 18 years old and and one of the favorites to be on the podium at the CrossFit Games this year. And they're having some difficulties with her deadlift and, and really just trying to bring that up and focus on strength. So he asked me some pointers and we put her on pretty much just a powerlifting block for deadlift. And uh, in 10 weeks, you know, brought her deadlift up pretty significantly, about like 60 to 80 pounds. Mm. So that's crazy. Yeah. And this girl's like 18. We were just like talking freshly about freshly 18. Yeah. So does Matt have a... Uh, <laughs> uh, real <Oop>. fresh. <laughs> he can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, she's jacked. It's yeah, crazy. she looks great. Yeah. Matt Frazier, um, I, I, first of all, I think it's amazing that he reached out because a lot of coaches and a lot... He's five-time CrossFit Games champ. Yeah. Like, what does he need help he's with? He's pretty but, yeah. good at a lot of things. But that's probably why he's so great is he's reaching out to other folks. Does he have an app or something like that? Is that what you're helping with? Or Yeah, so um, he has HWPO Training, which um, is his training platform. Hard work pays off. Right? Hard work mm-hmm. pays off. So they have four tracks right now that are mainly CrossFit-based. Um, I'm being brought on as the head strength coach for, for the company. So we're actually going to be – I'm going to be releasing a program. I believe it's coming out July 1st. Um, called HWPO Strong, and that's really going to be made for those people that are, you know, have a really high level of fitness but are lacking strength, mm-hmm. and they just want to focus on like maintaining their level of fitness while getting strong as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And but it's also just going to be a general great strength program. So some people that want to follow it, you know, the app is forty dollars a month, and to just get a really great strength programming with that has. So what we do, what we do different from most training apps is. We obviously have like our exercise library where we show you how to perform the exercises, but there's also about a five to 10 minute intro video of every workout mm-hmm. of what the intention of the workout is that day. What stimulus should we work? What should we, should we be focusing on? Mm-hmm. Um, really? What, what are we looking to get out of this session? And I think that's something it makes it, while it's not a personalized program, it makes it feel a little bit mm-hmm. more personal because now you know in your head, okay, this is what I need to be hitting. This is why I'm hitting it. Um, and yeah, it's honestly like it's a huge honor <laughs> for Matt to come to me and ask yeah. me to take on this role because I look at myself like, yeah, you know, I've done some cool shit in the sport of strongman and I'm pretty strong, but I look at Matt as like, you know, fucking five times CrossFit champion. Games champion. That's insane. And, uh, you know, to be, to be looked at in that light as, you know, to be able to take over the strength piece of that, of that program is, uh, it's pretty sick. Do you mess with any Metcons or anything like that? We do CrossFit three times a week. Wow. Yeah. Um, actually go to a CrossFit gym and, and wow. do the, the daily class three times a week. So we're, we're part of the 6 a.m. crew, uh, get up nice and early. And, well, you just did Randy, right? <laughs> so I, so I almost broke two CrossFit world records accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so yeah, what was the nature of that workout like? <clears throat> so barbells. That's Bar- it. Um, <laughs> okay. yeah, so the first great. one was uh, it's Randy, which is seventy five pound barbell, seventy five snatches as fast as possible. Wow. Um. So I did it in two minutes and thirty eight seconds. What the fuck? And the world record yeah. I think it was like two thirteen, two fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um. The other one was Grace, which is one hundred thirty five pounds, clean and press, clean and jerk for thirty reps. Mm. Um. I didn't know the world record going into the workout and I did it in a minute and seven seconds and then found out afterwards the world record's 59 seconds. Mm. And I'm like, shit, if I had known that, I probably wouldn't have put it down after 20 and taken a breath. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. But honestly, like, there's so many great parallels between, like, CrossFit and Strongman because you look at, like, Mm. a CrossFit gym, you're... Your typical workout's going to be between that 10 to 20 minute range. That's kind of the sweet spot for your CrossFit gyms. Mm -hmm. And like to be able to work in that conditioning space for that amount of time, you're going to see great carryover to conditioning and strongman. Um, So that's really, and honestly, like I love CrossFit. That's, I got my start in strongman out of a CrossFit gym in 2009. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've always, there's always been something that draws me back. And now to be a little bit more ingrained in the community, working with Matt and HWPO and like for us to be able to like, just go up to his house and hang out for the weekend and train. It's like the first time we went up there, we're like, we're laying in bed. And I looked at him. I was like, we're at Matt Fraser's house right now. And they're just like good people. Like it just wasn't even like, not even phased, like not even nervous. They're just like, here, just grab whatever you want in the fridge. Like let's make this your home. I'm like, all right. Okay. Did Sammy cook for you? I see those meals she posted yeah. about. Yeah, she's an amazing, yeah. amazing. And she has things like stocked in the fridge. She's like, just grab a like overnight oats. Like she has things just like planned. I'm like, like peanut wow. butter and jelly overnight oats, just like sitting there oh. to eat whenever. It's That's like, gotta be all so right, good. I'll take that. You <laughs> know, like, but yeah, like they're they're just great people. And it, like I said, it's it's really an honor to be a part of that that crew now. And um, you know, we're looking to do a lot of really cool stuff. Like this will be our first year going to the CrossFit Games, so I'm super excited about that. And you know, it's what I think. What's also cool is like they look at us like a package deal, right? Like it's I had to go up there one weekend. Um, Joey had a bachelorette party to go to. As gays, we don't go to the bachelor parties. Yeah, no. We go to the bachelorette parties. Um, <laughs> okay. So he was at a bachelorette party, and I go up there, and like I walk in, like Matt gives me this big hug, and he's like, "Oh, like where's Joey?" He's like, "Oh, he's at a bachelorette." So he was pissing himself off of that. And then Mal, Mal and Joey like hit it off right away, and Mal goes. Where's Joey? I was like, oh, he's at a bachelorette. She goes, well, that's unacceptable. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I think when we were leaving the first time I met her, I was like, I'm the older gay brother that you never asked for, (laughs) but you're getting. Yeah. So it's been, yeah, it's been really, really cool. And I'm, I'm super excited to be, you know, to be in this new role and working with them. Yeah. Being in, being in the sport of strongman for so long now, what do you think the sport could improve on to potentially get bigger? Because it, you know, there's a lot of different things in strongman, but you don't see dedicated, you don't see a lot of dedicated strongman gyms. Maybe there's a powerlifting gym that has some strongman equipment, but you don't see any just strongman gyms. So I think the biggest thing is like, granted, saying that we've, we have seen a huge swing in the direction of, you know, more mainstream sport for strongman. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like 
The amateur circuit here in the U.S. has gotten a lot bigger, which is great. I think people are realizing that it's accessible to more than just the monsters of men. Um, and seeing that it is getting more attention at the lower weight classes right now, there's, you know, Clash on the Coast. There's some like really great organizations that are working to promote the, the lower weight classes mm -hmm. because up until recently, it's like, well, you're a heavyweight or you're nothing. Right. Like there was really no future for you as a, as a lower weight class athlete. And now that's starting to change. So I think that's going to help grow the sport in a really positive direction. Um, you know, I think honestly, it's just, it's just going to be time. And I, I think another thing is like in America, there isn't that cultural appreciation for strength mm -hmm. as there is in other countries, right? Like we go to the UK and I compete there. 10,000 seat arenas sold out. It's wild. It's like wow. the first time I had a contest there, I was like, this many people are watching. I'm used to like the parking lot where there's like a <laughs> couple people on bleachers. Yeah. We went, the first time I competed in the UK was at the O2 arena in Leeds, 12,000 seats sold out. And it's just, you walk out and it is a wall of people mm -hmm. as far as you can see, you know, and here in the U S like the Arnold was actually the most attended strongman competition we've had in the U S and there was about six or 7,000 people there still, which was amazing. amazing. And now, but we're at a point where the Arnold strongman classic is the biggest competition draw at the expo. Right. So like, we're definitely starting to see a shift. I think it is just time. And like, people are starting to realize being strong is really fucking cool. Yeah. But even to add to that, I think they need to tap in like, kind of like how CrossFit does. It's like the basis of community. Like you need to get the beginners to go because no one's going to want to go to a gym and lift all this stuff when they have no idea what they're doing. It's intimidating. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to bring a sense of community and like build it from the ground up yeah. to kind of build it for like years to come. Yeah. That's one really cool thing that CrossFit has done though, because they have these workouts that are just set. And mm -hmm. like, when you think about how complex Strongman can be with all the different equipments and yeah. all, all these different things you guys are working with, if there's nothing set that somebody can just no. do, it's like, I'm gonna just go bodybuild. <laughs> yeah, like, you need some assistance in like whatever type of Strongman event you're doing. Yeah. It's like, there's so many that you like, mm. you're just learning new ones all the time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for your time today. I know you've got, got a busy week ahead of, yeah, ahead of you. And, uh, I know. <laughs> wish you all the luck. This in is the world. more fun, though. It is, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Get to dick around. We're allowed to say that one? <laughs> I think so. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and how appropriate. Yeah. What a way to end the show. You know? <clears throat> Thank you guys again. <laughs> I really you. appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks for having this us. This was awesome. Where can people get the book, Strong? So you can find Strong. Uh, it's anywhere books are sold. So it's in Barnes and Noble and all that stuff or online at Amazon.com. All right, Andrew, take us on out of here. All righty. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Sincerely appreciate it. Please drop us some comments down below. Make sure you guys like today's video. Subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already. Follow the podcast at MB Power Project on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. My Instagram, TikTok, Twitter is at I am Andrew Z and Simo. Where are you at? Don't forget to head to the Discord. I think we're almost at 1,200 members. Damn, so sweet. head there because we're answering a bunch of questions and doing fun shit there. So, and Seema Yin Yang on Instagram, YouTube, at Seema Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Joe, Joey. Joey, right? yeah. Joey, Rob, where can people find you guys? So you can find me at jkearney15 at Instagram. And then I am the world's strongest gay on Instagram and YouTube. What if uh, one of the guys that wins this year comes out as being gay and then he's like, There's I'm the world's strongest. Yeah, what happens? No, it's a full on battle. Battle. <laughs> yeah. no. Turns into a UFC I, I match. I play dirty. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not letting that shit go that easy. I love it. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. I didn't think about that. <laughs>